In my last video, I worked out that there was a significant voltage drop at the headlight, 2.2 volts. So today I'm going to uh, design a circuit to resolve the voltage drop, but there's two things I need to keep in mind before I do so. The first being, voltage drops are inherent to circuitry, especially where there are limitations in terms of the thickness of the wire, you can use the resistance in the circuit. A second thing is the voltage drop in this specific um, circuit is going to be a function of current times resistance. So that's the current the headlight is pulling times the resistance of the wiring. And wiring is the majority of this circuit. Obviously there's wires all the way from the front to the back of the bike with just a few switches here, one and there. So amps, the current in the system we can't change that is defined by the 60 watt headlight bulb. So the one thing that we can do if we take that equation voltage drop magnitude is the same as current times resistance is we can reduce the resistance. So where is the resistance coming in this circuit? Um, and it's going to be down to the wires. So I'm not sure how visible this is but these wires are very thin um, they're probably 0.75 millimeter wires which does not do the job of carrying um, the current required to the headlight and that's probably the reason why I'm getting so much voltage drop that for cost reasons or practicality reasons the wiring used in this bike is just too thin to do the job. Now obviously in terms of the correct wiring gauge or the thickness of the wires there are lots of calculators online which define based on copper resistance how thick wires should be um, plug in the details uh, into one of these online calculators and it will tell you. The only thing you need to know when you're doing that is basically the length of the circuit, so from the battery to the um, headlight bulb, and in this case I'm going to take a guess it's about two meters one side of the circuit and two meters back because of all the crossing over it needs to do. And the second thing that you need to know is, well, third thing would be volts, but we know those is a 12 volt system. The second thing that you need to know is the amps, or the current in the system. And to calculate amps or current that are being drawn by the headlight bulb, very simple equation, and that is amps equals watts divided by volts. So 60 watt headlight uh, bulb divided by 12 volts DC in the system will give us a 5 amp uh, current on this particular circuit. So now that we know the length of the circuit, the current going through the circuit, we can plug this data into one of the online calculators. And what I found was that to get more or less a voltage drop of 0 0.3 volts, that's a, I think a 1.3% voltage drop, um, you need to use wire of 1.6 millimeter squared, I think that's 12 American gauge, um, might be 14. So obviously using um, 1.5 millimeter squared wire rather than the 0 0.75 that they've used from factory should then resolve the issue. Um, and in fact if I plug in the data regarding these wires into the same calculator I am getting somewhere around the magnitude of 2 volts. So that just proves that the wiring is probably at fault here. Now there are two options what to do at this point. The first option is um, by far the most difficult. I could rewire the whole bike from the battery all the way through the switches using the same setup here but changing all these wires specifically for the headlight circuit, perhaps for all the circuits with thicker wires. But there are some downsides. Obviously it would be extremely long-winded having to break open the wiring loom replace all the wires necessary with thick gauge wires so it'll be long-winded considerably more expensive and the downside with the wiring loom which is neat and tidy here would be significantly thicker and you'd lose a lot of flexibility in the loom when the handlebars turn obviously the loom has to turn as well so you lose a lot of flexibility a second option is just to run two wires from the battery all the way up here positive wires that would plug into a relay and then two more ground wires back to the battery. 
So, four wires, each about two meters long, or maybe one and a half meters, up to this section of the bat of the motorbike, plug them into some relays, and to trigger the relays we can use the existing wiring. So that's the great thing. Option two, we won't be changing the wiring system at all. We'll just be adding four wires at the right gauge all the way from the batteries at the top of the bike. So that's what I'm going to do now. That's what I will be doing. Um, so I'm going to put on the screen now an example of the circuit that I want to build. Okay, so this is the circuit that I intend to build. In the dotted lines here, um, I've depicted the current circuit, so from the battery to the current fuse box, through the ignition switch, the headlight on-off switch, and the headlight select switch for the low beam and high beam. Um, in the existing circuit, obviously that would go then to the headlight bulb, but I'm going to use this existing wiring to trigger the relay. So the positive wire that would have gone to the headlight bulb would go to pin out 86 on the relay, pin 87, uh, sorry, 85, I'll be using the ground wire from the headlight to ground the trigger. And then onto the new circuit parts, um, I'll be using an inline fuse from the battery, um, and then a length of wire to the relay, so from the back of the bike to the front of the bike, then the relay itself. At the relay then, a short wire to the battery, and then obviously a grounding wire all the way back to the battery or a grounding point. I'm going to wire it all the way back to the battery if space allows. If not, then I'll use one of the grounding points at the front of the bike. So as for materials that I'll be needing to do this project, obviously an inline fuse, lengths of wire to connect the fuse with the relay and the relay to the bulb, and then the grounding wire as well. So I've calculated the calculated I'll be needing 1.5 millimeter squared copper wire. Obviously that may change depending on the application or the circuit that you're designing. A four pin normally open relay as well. Um, obviously suitable amperage to handle the current in your circuit. And obviously don't forget the con connectors as well. So the connectors on the headlight bulb and the relay, you should be able to use 6.3 millimeter spade connectors. And at the battery then, um, you'll be needing something that's suitable to connect to the battery terminals, um, perhaps eye connectors, ring connectors, something of that sort. And finally, one last connector then to connect the fuse itself to the length of wire you're going to be using to go back up to the relay. Um, other than that, a few sundries that you're going to need, some insulation obviously for the connectors, you don't want any bare metal hanging around, so I'm going to use heat shrink tubing, that's my favourite, but you could use electrical tape if you wanted to, as well as something to cover the wires, so for example loom tape, or in my case I'll be using conduit to wire to um, route the wires through, and some zip ties just to attach the new loom that you're creating to the existing loom, or alternatively to the frame, wherever on the bike is suitable. So once you have your circuit designed, it's a simple matter of going out and buying the products really, and that's what I'll be doing next. Um, drop by the shop this evening, and. Hopefully by tomorrow then I'll be able to build up the, um, the circuit. And again, the goal for this circuit is to reduce the voltage drop to at least 0 0.5 volts. But in my case, I'd like to get to 0 0.3 volts. So, um, thanks for watching and I'll be back when I get the materials.